In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between our hobby, tabletop wargaming, and other hobbies, and why maybe the sense of completion could be important. This may be a little bit all over the place because it's a concept that I've been trying to wrangle in my head the last couple of days. And uh, as I generally almost never actually sit down and write what I'm going to say when I do these videos, I pretty much just talk off the top of my head. Um, this one might go who knows where. Within the hobby of tabletop wargaming, there are big companies and there are small companies. There are small one and two person companies that um, produce great stuff, certainly, absolutely. And then there are bigger companies that maybe don't produce as good stuff. There are big companies that produce amazing stuff and there are small companies that sort of phone it in. It's all across the place. Here's the deal. All of those companies, if you add them all together, are very, very, very small in comparison to honestly most other hobby industries, okay? If you take a look at video gaming, just to pick probably one of the biggest hobby industries, in 2019, they made something like 180, 185 billion with a B dollars in revenue. Last year, 2019, tabletop gaming, not tabletop wargaming, but tabletop gaming, including RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons and all that kind of stuff, board gaming, Catan, yada, yada, and, uh, you know, collectible card games even, like Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and whatnot, that entire industry was less than $2 billion with a B. I think it was 1.8. So that's like 1% of the video gaming industry revenue in our tiny little, uh, you know, kind of hobby that we like to, to think about. So because of that, you have to look at it and go, okay, well, well, why is that? Why is our hobby industry bringing in so much less than so many others, specifically video games, but many other hobbies as well. The reason that I've been kind of noodling around recently uh, about why this is, it, it, I think it has something to do with the perceived uh, point of, I've bought the thing to get into this hobby, and now I'm doing the thing. You see what I'm saying? If you, uh, if you go to the store and you buy a video game disc, if people even do that anymore, I, I'm old, but you still, I, I'm downloading most of my games these days when I do play. But anyway, it, it, you do that, whether it's just clicking on Steam and then waiting for it to download or going to the store and bringing the disc home and putting it in the machine, you do that and then now you're playing. So mission accomplished, right? You're finished. You're, you're, you get to play now and there you go. Whereas those of us in Wargaming, and I hear this all the time as a complaint from people, well, I bought the thing and that was easy. You know, buying's not that difficult. If you have the money in hand and the place has it in stock, boom, there you go, done. And there's an endorphin rush that I've talked about before in multiple videos that you kind of get from that. And then you come home and now you're looking at it and now you have to cut out all the little bits. You have to read the instructions, figure out how you want to put it together. Very frequently, there's multiple ways that this particular kit can go together depending on weapon loadouts and this and that and whatever. So you do all that, right? And then you start shaving off the little pieces and getting rid of the little mold lines and sanding and all that stuff. And you glue and you do all that and some more sanding and primer and then painting and all that jazz. So it's a long process to now have this model that now you can play with. The thing is, is that having a model that you can play with is not necessarily when you get to start having fun, in my opinion. In my opinion, the hobby lets you start having fun as soon as you open the package, right? You open the package and now you have a bunch of sprues and some bases and some other, you know, doodads and whatnot and the instruction thing, hopefully, sometimes it depends on the company. Sometimes they don't have instructions in the box or whatever, but you follow the instructions and you figure these things out and you start doing that. For me, that's the hobby. I got started and it probably, if you sat down and said to me, here's a box of, I don't know, Space Marines, and you said to another person, I'm gonna click this link on Steam so you can play this video game, I bet, I bet I get to start having fun before you do. Because depending on your internet, it might take you an hour or two before you get the game. An hour or two in, I'll have like two Space Marines built, maybe. I don't know, maybe three. Uh, but the thing is, is that I'm getting to do the thing I enjoy. I'm listening to a podcast, I'm listening to an audiobook, I'm sanding, I'm doing all that kind of stuff. And people don't look at the game, the, the hobby, that way. They look at the game as like, now I get to play. And they're comparing it against, let's say something again, like video games. Well, I got to play as soon as I hit start. Over here, I had to do a whole bunch of work to get there. And that's true. But really, if you look at the hobby, the hobby is the whole thing in many situations. 
Now, it is true there are some people out there who play tabletop war games and don't do any hobby. You could play Hero Clicks, which is the little pre-painted little superheroes. They come in a little package. You don't know what you're going to get, but you open it up so you got that kind of Magic the Gathering Pokemon sort of I don't know what's in the pack sort of thing, but you got these things that are ready to go. You can start playing instantly. That's that's fine. There are other people who buy models and then they have a friend or a spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, build them for them and maybe even paint them for them. There are other people who love to play the tabletop game and they get someone commissioned to do all the work, you know, to do all that stuff and then give them the finished stuff so that they can then start playing so they can actually start enjoying the hobby. I don't know. I've been noodling on this as well. If maybe the hobby is actually the hobby of tabletop wargaming is maybe actually two hobbies. Initially, I was like, no, because they both rely on each other. But that's sort of not true. I feel like that's a video for potentially next week. I'm going to put a pin in that one. Um, but nonetheless, the, the, the reason that I think that this hobby, tabletop wargaming, is perceived as taking so much longer to get going is because so many people are looking at, it's not until I can play that the hobby starts. And I think that people have to understand that it's actually a good deal before that. And video games aren't necessarily so quick to immediately hop uh, and, and get you into, you know, the, the where you want to get right from the start. Sure, you basically just have to click the little icon on your desktop or, you know, do the thing with the thumbs on the console and boom, there you go. Now you're playing Spider-Man or whatever. But are you good at it? Just because you've started playing doesn't mean that you are necessarily, if you're looking at it from the aspect of like, I want to play competitively, you're lousy to start when you start a new game. I don't care how good you are at first-person shooters and how many of those skills can translate across to this new first-person shooter that you're going to play. And there are certainly people who are just very good at the aiming and the tactics and stuff like that. But a new game, any one of those people who plays competitively will tell you they should probably not be in a tournament within the first three hours of them playing this new game. They need time to practice and to learn the maps and all that jazz. So just because, yeah, you get to play, if your goal is com competition, you're not going to be good until you've got tons and tons and tons and time in to practice. And that's fine too. It's the same with tabletop, obviously. You've gone through the time to build your stuff and you've got your things and you go to a tournament and it's your first tournament, maybe your first game, not a good time necessarily to go to your first tournament. Probably you should be playing a whole bunch and getting everything kind of figured out before you even start looking at tournaments. Totally makes sense. I get that. But people kind of don't see them the same way. And it's a perception thing, which goes through marketing, goes through a lot of different things in the industry. If you look at it from like, I have to jump through all these hoops, I have to go through all the things like sanding little people and painting the little faces and all that kind of stuff before I can play. Whereas with video games, I can just play, you know, then that's going to make us look bad. And that's why we're 1% of the revenue of, frankly, a lot of, uh, you know, specifically video games. And, and there's a lot of other things out there. Paintball. I did a little bit of paintball when I was younger. It was basically you buy a paintball marker and you put in some goggles and you put some balls and, and boom, there you go. You're playing. You're not necessarily good. You're not playing competitively, but you're starting right away. But you're not good at it until you've spent the time practicing and going through that kind of stuff. And tabletop gaming is the same way, specifically tabletop wargaming. You have this extra step. But like I said, when I was talking about maybe this hobby is two hobbies, there's a lot of people that sometimes prefer the first step over the second. There are plenty of people who love them both, and there are plenty of people who like the second step and kind of dread the first step, but there are plenty of people out there who like that first step of building and painting, and then they kind of stop there. I think the one big thing that has kept me as my main hobby for the longest amount of time being tabletop wargaming is the sense of completion. The, I got to this point and then I stopped there. That sense of completion, getting done and having a finished model or a finished squad of models or a finished piece of terrain or a finished cool, you know, vehicle, Having that actual physical manifestation that I can hold in my hand, I can put on a shelf, I can pull it and show to people, for me is a huge deal. And I think that for many of you, it probably is as well. And it's not something that no matter how long I've played video games that I've ever gotten from video games, even video games where you build stuff, like let's say like a Minecraft or whatever, you can make an amazing castle or dig a humongous mine and do all this stuff. And you can show some other people in, in Minecraft and go, hey, look what I did. And that's kind of cool to some degree. Um, but I find 
that the actual physical model that I can pull out and, and use in a game, or I can just pull out and show to a person, having that actual finish, and again, I don't know that it's an endorphin sort of a thing, but you get finished and that completion is for me really, really important. And it's what's kept me in this hobby for as long as it has. There are times when you play video games and you play and you play and you play all afternoon, all Saturday afternoon, you lose track of time and you look and you're like, oh, it's eight. It's dark out. I thought it was earlier than that. And that happens. We've probably all done that, who those you know, of us who play video games. I've done the exact same thing when sitting down to build and paint. Okay. I've gone a lot longer than I thought I was, especially if you're listening to like an audio book because they can be crazy, crazy long. And all of a sudden you look up and you're like, oh, it's dark. The thing is, is that when I get done, when I hit that spot where I've gone longer than I thought I was going to, and I look at what I've gotten done on a table, I still feel pretty good about it. When I've spent far too much time, more time than I had planned playing video games, let's say, and I get done with that, I don't feel as good about it. I feel as if I went too long. I wasted time. Even though I was enjoying myself, I was maybe actually, you know, like relaxing, depends on the game. Some games are less relaxing than others within video games, but I was having a good time. Maybe I was playing a multiplayer game, talking with friends. There's all those benefits. But when I get done, at least in me, and this is maybe something that you find as well, there seems to be sometimes a bit of an emptiness because I don't have finished physical stuff or even further along, you know, physical stuff in front of me. So if you've been teetering on you know, I'm in the hobby, but I don't know if I like the hobby and I have other hobbies. Think a little bit harder about tabletop wargaming from the aspect of not, I have to jump through all these hoops so that I can finally play. And other hobbies seem to get you right into the play part so much quicker. Because like I said, take a look at the beginning of this and the building and all that stuff as the, as you're already playing because you get to, you know, not be working. You're spending time crafting and, and you're thinking about the model or you're thinking about the podcast or you're thinking about the audiobook or whatever. And you're doing all that stuff and you're working and you're building and you're doing all these things and you're getting something that when you're done, you're further along and you can look at it, right? And, and, and the benefit also to having finished models in comparison to just playing more video games down the road is that you can also go back and look at your old finished models and you can see the progression from like, this was two years ago. That's, I thought this was good two years ago. Now look at this. Like this is better in general. Even if it's a little bit, you're still progressing and that's a definite benefit. And if you're thinking about like, I just don't know about the, the, the hobby and I don't look at it from that aspect. Look at it from like, I'm going to have physical stuff that I can look at later and I can get that, that enjoyment from. And I'm not having that with other things like video games, let's say, or, you know, all kinds of different hobbies. I, you know, why do people who fish not everybody, but many people who fish, when they catch a really big fish, why do they pay a whole bunch of money to get that thing mounted on their wall, you know, and all taxidermied and stuff like that? It's a physical manifestation. That's an important thing for us as humans is to have a physical manifestation. And I'm not saying don't play video games. Don't, don't get me wrong. I do it myself. I'm just saying if you like wargaming but you're not sure, think about it this way and see how it changes your mind. Or if you've got a friend who's thinking about getting into wargaming but they're like, ah, but there's a lot of... I don't know, video gaming is so much easier or fishing is so much easier or playing paintball is so much easier or remote control cars. Look at it from the aspect of like, well, yeah, you can start, you can go out buy a remote control car, like a little cheap one at the local hobby shop and start racing it right now, driving around in your driveway and stuff like that. But if you're concerned about being competitive and good, that's not a short road that you got to drive that tiny little remote control car down. That's expensive remote control car stuff. I've got friends who do that. It's not cheap. It's not something that comes in instantly to you. It takes years and years and years, just like tabletop gaming, you know, tabletop wargaming does. So I know we'll never get to a point where tabletop wargaming makes more money than video games. I get that. But I think that if you are thinking about why am I in this hobby, or if you've got friends who are thinking about getting the hobby, but they need extra, you know, maybe a little extra push about think about it that way. Think about it from the aspect of like, not only do you actually get to start doing stuff just as quickly as you do in any other, you know, kind of hobby because you get to start building and painting and doing all that stuff. You also have completed things at the end, physical manifestations of the time that you spent that you can show off to people. You can take pictures of them, put them on Instagram, whatever, all that kind of stuff. And then you get to play with them if you want to. One, two, three, four.